Good morning. God is amazing. Let's give him our worship and praise. Let's stand together and sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen. Are you not, how many of you are thankful for heat today? Thanks be to God. Woo! Man, God is good. Hey, welcome. It is a joy to be together. I appreciate you braving everything and being with us, and we can gather around the Word of God and trust the Father to speak to us out of His revealed truth and revealed Word. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 130. He says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you... There is forgiveness that you may be feared. Boy, aren't you thankful for God's forgiveness? I, I don't know about you, but I stand more in need of it all the time. And I am just so thankful for God's grace. Hey, let's pray. Let's commit our morning to him. God, you're a great God. We are in awe of your goodness. We wonder at your mercies. We praise and thank you for your forgiveness and grace. This day as we gather in your presence, Lord, we gather with hungry hearts, longing to hear you, longing to know your presence in our lives and hear your voice, hear, hear you speak to us through your revealed truth. And so God, capture these moments. God, speak into our lives. And Lord, transform us by your power is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Let's honor and worship him together by singing Wonderful, Wonderful Jesus. There is never a day so dreary. There is never a night so long. But the soul that is trusting Jesus will somewhere find a song. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. 
gives us in the heart he implanted a song a song of deliverance of courage of strength in the heart he implanted a song there is never a cross so heavy there is never a weight of woe but that jesus will help to carry because he loveth so wonderful wonderful jesus in the heart he implanted a song a song of deliverance of courage of strength in the heart he implanted a song there is never a care or burden there is never a grief or loss but that jesus in love will lighten when carried to the cross wonderful wonderful jesus in the heart he implanted the song a song of deliverance of courage of strength in the heart he implanted a song there is never a guilty sinner there is never a wandering one but that god can in mercy pardon through jesus christ his son wonderful wonderful jesus in the heart he implanted the song a song of deliverance of courage of strength in the heart he implanted a song there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place and i know that it's the spirit of the lord there are sweet expressions on each face and i know that it's the presence of the lord sweet holy spirit sweet heavenly Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. There are blessings we cannot receive till you know him in his fullness and believe. when you say I am going to walk with Jesus all the way sweet Holy Spirit sweet heavenly dove you're right here with us filling us with your love hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place and may god
God's Spirit move amongst us today as we learn more and more about Him. Let's stand together and sing the Spirit of the living God, asking Him to break us and, and make us what He wants us to be. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Break me. seated. Um, we will not have children's worship this morning, so no children's worship in early service. Well, amen. Let me invite you to turn with me this morning to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans, Romans chapter 8. We're going to begin reading here in verse 1 here in just a moment. Romans, Romans chapter 8. Uh, we've been, been uh, singing, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Fall fresh on me. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the Spirit of God today. We're going to talk about how to walk in the Spirit and uh, the the the, the, great, uh, the great challenge, but the great opportunity of walking in the Spirit and the power of walking in the Spirit uh, and the difference that makes. Here in uh, the first of 2021 here, as we've begun our, our new year, we began a series of messages on God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Uh, three times in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah talks about God is doing a new thing. Once in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah says God is doing a new thing. Consistently throughout all of Scripture, God describes the reality that He is ever and always doing something new and fresh. He is ever and always doing something unexpected and real. But every time we see what God does, it comes straight from the hand of God and we are blessed and we are thankful because God does a new thing. Uh, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. I will show you great and mighty things you didn't expect, you didn't plan, you didn't see that coming, but here it is, and here it is from God. Consistently throughout Scripture, that's exactly what God does. God continually shows up in incredible ways. Uh, whether it be a, a band of uh, disciples who were in a boat in a storm and suddenly Jesus is walking on the water to their aid. Boy, didn't see that coming. Uh, whether it is... Uh, 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 the children of Israel in uh, desperate uh, oppression by the Midianites and uh, God calls a, calls a Gideon and says, oh, dismiss the army. I'll tell you what, we're going to go to battle with uh, clay, clay pitchers and trumpets and, and torches today. Whoa, didn't see that coming. And God does incredible things. God does great and mighty things that we cannot expect, that we didn't see coming, but God is doing a new thing. Our theme verse for our series is out of Isaiah 43, verse 19. He says, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He says, I'm doing a new thing. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? Sometimes it's hard to see it. You know, 2020, God did a new thing. He did a new thing. And I'm going to tell you, there's going to be days that we're going to look back on it and see the hand of God's mercy and kindness and goodness to us. But sometimes in the middle of it, it's hard to see. We don't see. Do you not see it? I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. I'm going to make rivers in the desert because God is doing a new thing. Now, in our series... Let's just review a little bit because I, I, I really do want us to grab a hold of some truths out of God's Word. In, in our, our series, we began in Psalm 40, Psalm 40. 
Uh, I waited patiently for the Lord, and the Lord, Lord inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock, and he established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to my God. And this is what we decided, that when God does a new thing, this is what he does. He gives us a song in the darkest of places. In the most desperate of times, he moves and gives us a song of praise to our God. There, a new song. The next week we looked at Jeremiah. We met Jeremiah in Lamentations 3. And Jeremiah in Lamentations 3 is sitting outside of the, the destroyed uh, Jerusalem. He's sitting at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a spring outside of Jerusalem. And he's seen the devastation of Jerusalem. Uh, a, a, a temple that has been destroyed and uh, disassembled. The walls are in, uh, in, in rubble. And he says uh, they're, they're, he's seen... Multitudes of people taken into captivity and there is a remnant band, a small group of people eking out existence in Jerusalem. And he says, I looked around me at my circumstances. I looked around at all those things and my, my soul bowed down within me. I was just troubled and I was heavy hearted and I was bowed down. But then he says, I look to God. And when I looked to God, this is what he saw. He saw that God is, has steadfast love for those who are his. That God's mercies are fresh every morning. That God is great in His faithfulness to us and that He's good. And he said, I found hope. And we said, God gives us a new hope when we look to Him and don't look at circumstances. The next week we talked about how God gives us a new life. Then we talked about when, once we get a new life, He gives us a new family. The family of God, brothers and sisters in Christ that we're incredibly close to, that we are incredibly invested in. And he has a new home. This morning, I want us to talk about a new strength. A new strength. Very familiar passage of scripture to you, but it'll talk to us about a new strength. Those that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Thou, they mount up on wings like eagles, they run and they do not grow weary, they walk and they do not faint. They have new strength. Now how do we find that new strength? We find new strength in our walk in the Spirit. And, and hey, hey friends, I, I love you, so can I tell you true, tell you real. We as believers must walk in the Spirit. If you want to have victory in your life, you're going to learn how to walk in the Spirit. If you want to see productive service, then you're going to learn how to walk in the Spirit. We've got to figure out how to walk in the Spirit. Well, let's, let's look at uh, what the Word of God says to us in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Follow along with me in your, in, your, in your Bible. He says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in, in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit." For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Here in our passage of Scripture, we see some very clear truths about the Holy Spirit, about the Spirit of God and what the Spirit of God's ministry is and how the Spirit of God works in, in our hearts and in our lives. In verse 9, we find this, that if we are a child of God, if we belong to Christ, then we will have the indwelling Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is going to live inside of you if you're a believer. If you don't have the Spirit of God within you, you are not a believer. The Scripture is very clear about that. 
And then we're going to talk a little bit about if we walk in the Spirit, then it will be effective and powerful in our living. And if we walk in the Spirit, it will be effective and powerful in our serving. And so let's, uh, let's kind of look at those aspects to the Holy Spirit. First of all, verse 9 tells us, that we are born of the Spirit. You must be born of the Spirit. To be the child of God, the Spirit of God has to dwell within us. Verse 9 says so clearly, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. You do not belong to Him. You are not the child of God if the Holy Spirit is not alive and living within you. Our sin alienates and separates us from our God. The law came to reveal the, the holy nature and character of God and the wicked nature and, and sinful nature of our hearts and our lives. And and to reveal to us how helpless we are to obey the commands of God. But God has done what only God could do so that it would be possible for me to do what He asks me to do. God has done what is only possible for Him to do. Uh, he is redeemed, He is restored, He is reconciled so that I can be and, and that individual who would know Him and walk with Him. Jesus came and lived a perfect life laying down that life as a ransom so that I could live the life of God here and now. He made a sacrifice worthy, the only sacrifice worthy, for sin that I might be forgiven. In chapter 7, uh, the Apostle Paul sets that up. He says, the things I want to do, I don't do those things. The things I don't want to do, I do those things. He would end by saying, oh, wretched man that I am, who can, who can deliver me from this body of death? Who can deliver me? I, I, I'm a wretched man. My sin nature is overcome by temptation. My sin nature is uh, uh, unequal to the task of doing what I, I know and long to do. And about the time I think I'm cooking, I, I'm, I'm dying here. About the time I think I've got it lined out and I, I'm, I'm doing better, all of a sudden I realize and I come face to face with the reality of my sin nature. Years ago, years ago before we came to Maryville, uh, Josh was a little bitty shaver. He was uh, just a toddler, and uh, and there was a there was a guy uh, there was a guy that uh, that I knew in our church, Ed Gardner. Ed Gardner told me that uh, hey, uh, he had a farm with on, on the Missouri River bottoms, and there are cliffs that back up to the Missouri River bottoms down there uh, in the Jeff City area. You, do you know what I'm talking about? And are you awake? Okay, and it backs up on, uh, on these cliffs and on these, all this rough ground, so he's got this, this bottom ground and he's got all this rough ground. And back up in those, in those rocks, there are some, some incredible uh, fresh ponds because they're rock ponds, not mud ponds like ours, and they're, they're incredible. And he says, you know, you know, if you hike back there far enough, I've got this big old pond there, and it is full of bass. And, uh, and nobody ever fishes there because nobody wants to go there. Paul, if you want to go catch a mess of fish, why don't you come on down? You can hike through there. And so I, I thought, well, yeah. Uh, uh, a fresh pond that got no mud, full of bass that nobody fishes. Uh, I, I think I could be, I think you could twist my arm to go and, and haul some of those out of there. And so, uh, so I took, took Josh with me. So we, Josh and I went up there. <clears throat> that was an adventure, but we got there. Beautiful pond, beautiful setting, great, great experience, great time. And so, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I've got my pole ready. I'm ready, to, and, I, and I'm ready for my first cast. I'm sitting, standing there on the, on the dam. I'm ready for my first cast. And all of a sudden, and if you know me, uh, one of my talents, I wouldn't say it's a gift, but one of my talents is I see skunks. I don't know why. I just see them all the time. This week, I, I just was around two. That, that's a little light for me in a week's time. I saw one. I, I got out of the house and got pulled in the, in the driveway uh, one night this week about 7 o'clock. was getting ready to go in, and it was ferocious. The smell was ferocious. I thought, I hope Becky hit a skunk because if she didn't, we got one living with us. I made lots of noise making my way to the front door because I didn't want to startle it. So we're, we're at this pond. And man, I've hiked through all this stuff. Beautiful pond, full of bass. I'm excited. And I see coming down this, this bank toward the dam, this mama skunk and about four baby skunks. Have you ever seen baby skunks? They're cute as bugs here. <clears throat> at a distance. 
And, and I thought, I'm watching, I'm watching, I think they're going to leave us alone. And about the time she turns to leave, Josh says, Here, skunky, skunky! Do you know what a sound a skunk makes when it chases you? I know this. I've heard this many times. <laughs> I picked him up. We ran through the brush. Did not catch a single fish. About the time you think you're free of stink, stink is on you. Isn't that the way of life? Come on. Isn't that the way of life? About the time you think, you know what? I got that anger thing hand handled. It shows up and hurts the people you love best. Come on. About the time you think, you know that lust thing? I beat that dog. I put that to rest. It's dead. And it comes on like gangbusters. Yeah. That's the nature of sin. It just knocks on your door. And it knocks on your door. And we're powerless. And about the time we think we're free of it, here it comes again. And that's why we've got to have the power of God in our lives. We've got to have the Spirit of God moving and working in our lives in such an incredible way that God does what God can do so that we can live the way He has called us to live. And that's exactly what happens at the day of Pentecost. At the day of Pentecost, uh, we, meet, we meet a band of believers huddled together in an upper room praying in fear. And then the Spirit of God falls on them. And they go preach the Word of God in boldness and 3,000 people get get saved and then every day more people get saved because God moves. That's what we've got to have, the Spirit of God within us. If the Spirit of God is within us, then we become the child of God. Scripture says in verse 16 that the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's what he says here in verse 16 in this text, that the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. God's Holy Spirit has got to live within us. When God's Holy Spirit lives within us, then all of a sudden it empowers us to belonging. Jesus said to his followers, he says, hey, it's better for you guys that I go away. Now, can you imagine that statement? It's better for you guys that I get out of here. I mean, hanging out with Jesus for three years, every meal we eat with Jesus, every day we're there with Jesus, every word he speaks we get to hear, any problem we, we got we bring to him, and man, when you bring your problems to Jesus, you know what, you know what happens, right? The, the problems are gone. It's amazing. They got to see dead people raised from, uh, to life. They got to see blind people healed and see. Wow! It's better that I go for, for us, that you go away. Jesus, we're liking this. We're liking hanging out with you. He says it's better. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit cannot come and live within you. When the Holy Spirit comes, we have suddenly an intimacy with God because He lives within us. And now, He will never leave us nor forsake us. He lives within us. And now, we'll never be alone and we'll never be abandoned because He lives within us. Verse 15 in our text says this, that now we have the Spirit of God living within us and so that we can cry out, Abba, Father. We are adopted as children of God. We have a new relationship. We're the children of God. We're adopted as children of God. You know, I've always thought, I've always thought it would be incredible to be adopted. Would it not? Because when you're adopted, they look the world over and said, you know what? I want, I want that one right there. You're chosen. <clears throat> when you get brought home from the hospital, your folks got no choice. It's the luck of the draw. This is it. And you say, are you sure? 
Isn't there another one back there? No, no. It's an incredible, it's an incredible journey. Amen. It's an incredible journey. But man, to be adopted means I'm chosen, wanted, selected. And God, looking throughout all of creation, said, Son, I want you. Girl, I want you. And we're adopted. And we have a spirit of belonging so that we can come boldly into His presence, it says in Hebrews chapter 4. We come boldly into the presence of God because we belong. He came and did what was impossible for me to do so that I could have a, a relationship with God, a power with, with, from God, and the Spirit of God could take up residence within me. And now if I walk in the Spirit, this is what's going to happen. Now that the Spirit is living within me, now that the Spirit of God is inside of me, now that the Spirit of God is abiding with me, this is what He does. If I walk in the Spirit, He'll give me power to live and power to serve. Power to live and power to serve. Here in our text, he says, the mind set on the flesh is death. The Apostle Paul says here in verse 5, if we set our minds, set our minds, set on, on the spirit, it's life and peace, set on the flesh, it's death. The word for set here is, grows out of the Greek base word phraneo, phraneo. It means to entertain, to consider, to focus. If you focus on the things of the flesh... You're going, to, you're going to fulfill the deeds of the flesh. If you focus on the things of the Spirit, then you're going to fulfill the desires of the Spirit. The idea is that you're going to fuel what happens in your life by what, where you set your mind. Where, where is your focus? If you set your mind on, on, on the things of the flesh, then you're going to fuel the passions and the desires and the preoccupations and the ambitions of the flesh. If you set your mind on the things of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, Spirit, then you're going to fuel, you're going to fuel the things of the Spirit in your life. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, the Bible says this, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so where have you set your mind and what you're focusing on? What are you thinking about? When we focus on the flesh, we're going to get consumed by the flesh. When we focus on the Spirit, we're going to be consumed by the Spirit. John Stott said, John Stott said, a, a great deal depends on our mind. It is our thoughts ultimately which govern our behavior. Paul lists four characteristics of what happens when we decide we will walk walk in the flesh. We'll set our mind on the flesh. He says in verse 7, we will be hostile. There will be hostility to God. We will be hostile to God. We'll be in opposition to God. We'll oppose everything that is good, holy, and true because we'll be opposed to the things of God. And, and is there not a better description in our world today than that? Because in our world today, we call good evil and evil we call good. Where's that come from? What is that about? Where did we decide that was a good thing? Well, you decided that was a good thing because you set your mind on the flesh rather than the Spirit. And so you have a hostility to, toward God in your life. A second thing that happens when we set our mind on the, on, on the flesh and when we walk in the flesh, in verse 7 it says we are insubordinate to the law of God. It means we glory in our sin. We think sin is a great thing and we glory in our rebellion to God and it says we subject ourselves, we subject ourselves to sin. We subject ourselves. And the word subject here is uh, to be under orders as a military man is under orders. When somebody is in the military and they're under orders, what does that mean? <clears throat> I got news for you. It means they got no choice. When they're under orders and it says you're going to the Middle East, I, I've got news for you. That's where you're going. When you're under orders and it says, this is your task, uh, I, I know you wanted to be a nuclear physicist in the, in the military, this is what you're going to do. You're going to clean commodes. What are you going to do? You're going to clean commodes, that's what you're going to do. And this is what he says. If, if we set our mind on the things of the flesh then we will be under orders to the flesh. And it will yank you anywhere you want to be, anywhere it wants you to be. 
Verse 8 says, when we set our mind on the things of the flesh and walk in the flesh, we cannot please God. We cannot please God. Ultimately, the result of that is it results in death, verse 6 says. It results in death. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says, the one who is self-indulgent is dead even while they live. The one who's self-indulgent is dead even while they live. And that's the reality of what happens when you're walking in the flesh. You're dead even though you're living. You're, you're making a lot of noise. Uh, you're making a lot of show. But the reality is there's something dead within you. Uh, 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 there's something missing in your soul. There's something missing within you when you're pursuing the things of this world. Rather than the things of God, there's a longing that's not fulfilled. And you wish there was something else. But he goes on to say, the mind that's set on the spirit is life and peace. The mindset on the spirit is life and peace. And this is what happens when you walk in the spirit, when you set your mind on the spirit and you walk in the spirit, all of a sudden it births life within you. God put the Holy Spirit within us to empower us to live, to really live. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, If we'll walk in the Spirit, you'll not glorify, you will not glorify the things of the flesh. For the mindset in the Spirit is life. When we walk in the Spirit, we find life. I love the way Jesus said it in John chapter 10. He said, The thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life, that you might have that abundantly. He has come and put the Spirit within us that we might walk in the spirit and discover life somewhere we have the mistaken idea that somehow Christians suck the joy out of living and the world kind of thinks that Christians are pretty stodgy stodgy people pretty uh, pretty cheerless people and pretty angry at anything that's fun I don't know where they got that idea because people who know Jesus are more fully alive than anyone else in this world. And if you really know Christ and you're really walking in the Spirit, then you're going to bear the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. And I've got news for you. If you're walking in the Spirit and you're fully alive in Jesus, then, hey guys, joy ought to be splashing out of you wherever you go. Man, there ought, to be, there ought to be waves of joy in your wake. Wherever you go, where, whoever you see, the people say, boy, what's wrong with that guy? He loves Jesus. What can I say? He loves Jesus. He's full of life. There's joy. For the mindset of the Spirit brings life. Life. And it's our choice. Several years ago, many years ago, I was invited to dinner uh, at a house, and uh, we went, and uh, a, an incredible spread was laid. We sat there, and uh, uh, we had rice, and we had veggies cooked in all kinds of ways that I'd never seen before, and, and I kind of like veggies, and, uh, and it, they were delicious, and our main course, our main course was these small birds that were in this kind of sauce, and man, you had to hunt, you had to hunt for any meat. But the sauce was really good, and I'm, I'm looking around at that, and I'm thinking, and finally I was brave enough, I said, um, what, what is this we're eating? And they said, those are sparrows. I thought, I got a freezer full of steak and I'm eating sparrow. <laughs> what? That is the dirtiest, nastiest bird I know in this world. That's the first cousin to eating rats. What? We're born of the Spirit. We're invited to life. We're invited to a journey where God is going to break out in our journey, in our life, and burst forth joy in our lives. And we would choose to set our mind on the flesh rather than the spirit, really?
Because the mindset on the spirit is life. It produces life. It produces peace. When we fasten our attention on the spirit and what the spirit of God does, it brings peace peace into our journey. Uh, Paul says it this way to the believers at Philippi in Philippians chapter 4. He says, be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Where would we be in 2020 and 2021 if we didn't know that God's on the throne of all of creation, that God's still in charge, that nothing catches him by surprise, that he's moving and working in his world. And if we'll walk with him, we're going to see what he does. Where would we be? I've got news for you. We would have no peace. I don't know what it's like to be a non-believer, to not be a Christian and walk through a pandemic. Do you guys? Man, aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful? Doesn't that bring peace? And when we walk in the spirit, this is what produces. It produces life and peace. So, so the Spirit of God lives inside of us, empowering us, empowering us for Christian living, empowering us to walk in Christ. What's that look like? What's that look like? Well, God wants us to walk by faith, right? He wants us to walk by faith. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's what it says in the book of Hebrews. And so, so if I walk in the Spirit, how does that produce faith in my life? Well, if I walk in the Spirit, this is what God's going to do. He's going to show me His character. And the more and more I see the character of God, the more and more I understand the nature of God, the more I understand how big God is, how great God is, how powerful God is, I'm going to tell you, it builds faith. And then He's going to, then he's going to show me the, the, the reality of His promises. He's going to take me to, take me to His Word. And I'm going to see that God promises, and God promises, and God promises, and God keeps every promise He makes. And, and if, if, if I start walking in that way, and walking in the Spirit, and I start seeing the character of God, and the nature of His promises, and, and find the strength of endurance by His Spirit, you know what happens? Faith grows in my life. Love, same way. Forgiveness, same thing. When you walk in the Spirit, He empowers us to live. It's critical for us as believers to walk in the Spirit so we truly live the life Christ intended us to live. One of the worst advertisements for Christ is a Christian who is not walking in the Spirit and not living the life. It's the great deterrent to our world coming to Christ. Hey, my friend, I love you. Walk in the Spirit. You'll never regret it because you'll discover the life God intended you to live. And you don't want to miss that life. But there's a second great benefit in walking in the Spirit. And hey, my friend, uh, dear, dear saint of God, I'm, I'm talking to the choir today. It's a snowy morning, and, and here we are, uh, the, the few, the brave, the bold, okay? And so I'm talking to you. This, 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 this is for you. If we walk in the Spirit, we will see and find from God more effective, more powerful service in His kingdom. So what are you talking about? I'm, I'm talking about this. If, I'm, if I can walk in the Spirit, if I can so walk in the Spirit that God leads and God moves and God works, then I'm going to see God do what only God can do in lives, and I'm going to see supernatural things happen because God works powerfully by His Spirit. In the book of Acts, we see that over and over and over in Scripture. In Acts chapter 2, a small band of believers, suddenly 3,000 people saved because the power of the Spirit. Philip, one of the first deacons, was directed by God to Samaria, begins to preach in Samaria. A revival breaks out. God is moving and God tells, tells Philip to go out into the desert and he does, and there there's an Ethiopian eunuch driving by in a chariot, and God says, chase him down, and he does. And, and uh, he shares the gospel with the Ethiopian, and then the Bible says that the Spirit of God caught him up, and he planted him in another place. And God just moved powerfully to accomplish that. I love what Acts, how it describes it in Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, uh, the Spirit of God told, told Peter to go to uh, 
Cornelius' house. He was at Simon the Tanner's house, which was a startling thing, a whole story there. But then the Spirit of God told him, I want you to go to Cornelius' house. He was a Gentile, a God-fearer. And uh, at this point, they didn't know if Gentiles would got to get in. They didn't know if Gentiles got to get in. I don't know if they can have Jesus. We got Jesus. I don't know if you get Jesus. And, and God told him to go to Cornelius' house. And when he, when he came to Cornelius' house, he started preaching. And his whole household got saved because God had already been there. God had already prepared Cornelius and God had already spoken to Cornelius. And, and, and Peter was simply faithful and he got there. I, you know, what would it be like? What would it be like if we got to church and man, preachers preaching and people are standing up saying, hold up, hold up. I got to get saved. Let's just shut her down right now. We got to do business with God. I'm living for that day. That's a hot day because God moved. And that's what God does. God works when we don't see and in ways we don't understand. Sometimes we get gripped in this extreme in our spirit where we want to know the will of God, want to do the will of God, agonize over the will of God, and we struggle so much we don't do anything. And sometimes we get between these two two great tensions, um, great attention to detail or God doesn't care about anything but the big, big stuff. And you know what? God cares about every detail. He cares when a sparrow falls to the ground. So he cares about every detail. But he also doesn't want you to be hamstrung by worrying about the will of God. He wants us to step out and do something. Step out and do something. I understand we're going to hear a whisper of God. This is what the Bible says uh, in, in Isaiah 30, verse 21. You will hear a word in your ear. This is the way, walk in it. And uh, I think God will direct us. God gives us promptings. And this is what He wants us to do, is to walk so in the Spirit that when a prompting from God comes, we're faithful. Sometimes they come and you think, ah, oh, they'll think I'm weird. Two of our college students this, uh, this past week were coming out of Walmart. And they told me when they were coming out of Walmart, they saw this person standing over there and they were just prompted, you know, maybe we need to go talk to them. You ever, you ever get a feeling like that? Yeah. And they went over and talked to this individual. And that individual said, you know, I was going into Walmart to buy some pills and try to, try to end my life. Now, who was in that? I'll, I'll tell you who was in that. God was in that. Because God, God was preparing and working in that heart to be open and to share. And God was working and moving in these two hearts to be sensitive to His prompting and to meet a holy moment given by God. We've got to walk in the Spirit so we see those holy moments given us by God because God is at work in His world. God is working all around us. He's speaking to lives all around us. Sometimes we lose sight of this fact. But God is at work in His world. And he's drawing men to himself. And he's prompting and, and influencing lives. And if we'll listen to him, if we'll walk in the Spirit, there'll be moments that come. We'll get a prompting from God and we'll think, well, that's weird. But if you're faithful, more times than not, you're going to see this. God's already been there. God's already at work. God is doing amazing. If we'll walk in the Spirit, we'll see what the Spirit of God can do. I love uh, Howard Hendricks. Howard Hendricks was a, was a great teacher of the Word of God and a great teacher of preachers and uh, in a large church in, uh, in Texas. And uh, they came in their church. They needed a Sunday school teacher for junior high boys. Junior high boys. Now, the line standing 
the, the line forming to teach junior high boys in Sunday school is not large, okay? It's not a long line. And they had a list of people they wanted to ask, and they asked everybody they could, and they found one person who was willing. And they told Howard who, who, who was going to teach junior high boys, and he, and he said to them, you have got to be kidding me. When he heard who was going to teach, he says, you've got to be kidding me. I thought that the young man was totally unequal to the task. But in a matter of months, that Sunday school class exploded. And there were boys digging in the Word and growing in Christ. and It was just amazing. Howard Hendricks knew that, wow, I, I was way wrong. And so he invited the young man to come to his house for lunch. He wanted to ask him what he was doing and how, how it was that God was able to work in his life. And they sat down, ate lunch, and, and he said, so what's going on in Sunday school? How is this happening? And the young man took out a, a, a little book he carried with him at all times. And on every page was a picture of another, another young man. And under every, every page, every picture, were, was a statement. Having trouble in math. Comes to, to church alone. Out of a broken home. He says, I pray over every one of these pages every day and I just can't hardly wait for Sundays to get here and see what God has been doing. Because when you walk in the Spirit and you trust Him, He does mighty things. Oh, how do I know if I'm walking in the Spirit? You know if you're walking in the Spirit when you start to bear the fruit of the Spirit. When love takes root in your soul. When joy is evidenced in your life. When peace and patience, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control grow. If we're going to find new strength, we're going to find it because we walk in the Spirit. We'll find life we'll find God do God stuff in our lives. Our musicians are going to come. We're going to sing our hymn of decision this morning. God is a great God and God is, uh, uh, is amazing. He speaks to our hearts and our lives. And if He's spoken to your heart, let me invite you and encourage you to respond to Him today. What's He asking you to, to do? What's He asking uh, you to respond? Do you need to receive Christ? I'd love to pray with you. Do you are you here and you need a church family? Uh, we would welcome you here. Uh, is there just a burden on your heart, something you want to pray about? The altar's open if you want to come and pray. I would delight to pray with you this morning if you so wish. So as we stand, as we sing, as the Spirit of God speaks, will you respond to Him today? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own Been a joy to be together, guys. Hey, uh, one week from tomorrow, we're going to try to try to travel to, over to Allendale and uh, hang some sheetrock. If uh, uh, and uh, at this point, 
if we have the crew that signed up so far, we will be there for four or five days. So if we're going to get that done in a day, I would welcome your involvement. There's a sign-up sheet out there in the Narthex, and uh, we look eagerly forward to a, a, just a good time as a church family. So brothers, sisters, uh, come join us. It'll be a great, great time. Hey, Brian, anything you want to share with us? Um, Tate wanted me to let everybody know, and I told him he needed to be here, but he couldn't come um, because he needs to get his family here for Sunday school. There is no snowball. What? Tate is a weenie. Because of the extreme cold, he decided that it would be best not to. I'm not involved. I'm only the messenger. I think we stoned the messenger. (laughs) No thanks. That's not what I want to go down for is the snowball. <laughs> but anyway, they're still having... We'll have a public stoning in the parking lot immediately following <laughs> service. Yeah. They're still having their get-together this evening over at the Max and hanging out and doing that. But because of cold weather, no snowball this afternoon. So if you have problems, go to Sunday school and see Tate and talk to him about that. All right. And then children's choir starts next week. Pray for us. Pray okay, for us. let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, it has been good to be in your house. And Lord, I just thank you for giving us safety as we got here. Thank you for this warm place that we can come and learn about you. And I pray that we would leave changed because your word has spoken to us, because your Holy Spirit is moving and working in us and convicting us and and developing in us. So Lord, I pray that you would be with us this day. Lord, may we listen to the call of your Spirit and may we apply the things that we've learned this day. I pray that you'd be with us as we go to the Sunday school hour, that we would have a great time learning more about you, and then I pray that you'd keep us safe and bring us back this evening to worship you. I pray that you'd be with the youth event this evening, um, that, Lord, the gospel can be shared and that uh, your testimony can be shared amongst our our, um, youth as they gather around and enjoy football together. Just pray that you'd keep us safe. Um, Thank you for this time we've had together this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.